It outlines our policies and our objectives in trying to see agriculture as the uh, next and biggest alternative in our drive to um, diversify the economy of this country. The document is titled The Green Alternative and it outlines virtually everything we need to do, every policy we need to undertake to achieve self-sufficiency in agriculture and also to become a major exporter of agricultural products, a situation which we occupied many decades ago. We are working hard on the staples to satisfy local production and we are fully aware that there is a major concern in the country for food self-sufficiency and that there is crisis in many families and a severe shortage of food. But we're working hard and we want to thank God that ours has not yet become as bad as that of uh, one South American country which was also a major oil producer, by that I mean Venezuela, and whose situation is definitely a hundred times worse than ours. But the point is that where we're going, we believe in a short while, another year and a half at the maximum, we should be reasonably self-sufficient in grains like rice, maize, beans. We may not have achieved everything in wheat, but we'll be very close to our targets. Other things are also there in the roadmap. Uh, quite a voluminous document for you to look at. But that's briefly what Council endorsed this afternoon. We were looking at the security situation in agriculture. Sometime last year, some young men went to Olufalae's farm. Olufalae. And a Nigerian of uh, stature in age and, and rank and, and responsibilities held and took him away, marched him along, forced him to trek 10 kilometers, carried on their back. So many more farmers are coming in, including foreign investors. And we are aware that they stand the risk of being subjected to this kind of humiliation. So we are talking with the Ministry of Interior that we have to put measures in place. These things have happened in other countries too, where the Civil Defense Corps may have to train a special department to protect huge investors and investors on their farms for a fee, because the kidnapping will not stop. The midnight harvesting will not stop. A friend of mine on Kaduna Road had uh, uh, 200 hectares of maize when it was time for harvest, they didn't find a cob because the villagers had harvested everything at night. And he's a broken man, invested everything he had. So from a security point of view, we have to take measures to make sure that people who invest are protected.